Are you editing in Final Cut Pro and looking for the easiest way to speed up your workflow and create better videos faster? In this video, I'm gonna run through my top five editing tips for Final Cut Pro. Hey, it's Justin Brown here from Primal Video. We release a ton of content to help you get better results with your videos faster. If you're new here, then make sure you click that big subscribe button and all the links to everything that we mentioned in this video, you can find linked in the description below. So let's jump into it. Final Cut Pro is an awesome option when it comes to video editing software. Personally, I use it all the time and that's actually how I'm editing these YouTube videos. As far as editing efficiency is concerned, it's really hard to beat once you have the right workflow in place. Final Cut Pro is incredibly well optimized for Mac and Intel based CPUs, which I absolutely love. But to get your editing even faster and easily boost the quality of your videos, in this video, I'm gonna cover my top five Final Cut Pro tips that you can implement right now. And stick around to the end because I'll show you how you can get free access to our advanced guide running through the ultimate process for editing videos faster, no matter what software you're using. First off, in video editing, there's always lots of different ways to essentially do the same thing. Some people would prefer to use the mouse and do everything clicking and dragging. Other people will edit using purely the keyboard and learning all the keyboard shortcuts. So what's gonna be the quickest for you will really come down to how you like to edit. But there are two keyboard shortcuts that I think that you definitely need to know if you don't already that will dramatically increase your editing speed. Now these two shortcuts are called trim top and trim tail. And these are gonna save you what would be essentially three or four steps with a mouse click with one keyboard press. And the two keyboard shortcuts are option square bracket left and option square bracket right. So essentially what these keyboard shortcuts will allow you to do is from your playback head, when you press Alt square bracket left or trim top, it's going to make a cut in your timeline where that playback head indicator is, your timeline marker, back to the previous cut in your timeline. So back towards the left and it will delete whatever's in the middle and it will remove it from your timeline and close the gap all with that one keyboard shortcut. And exactly the same then for trim tail. So option square bracket right is going to make a cut in your timeline where your playback indicator is and remove everything to the right up until the next cut in your timeline. So it's gonna make a cut and it's going to lift and extract everything that's in between the two cuts in your timeline, remove it and close up the gap. Now to do this with a mouse, that's a few different clicks. One to make a cut in the timeline, one to select the clips and to delete them, and another one to close up the gap. Obviously that's a little dependent on how you've got your timeline set up, but the principle here is that it's gonna save you a heap of time because it'll allow you to chop down a huge amount of footage to something small and manageable really quick. If you can just skim through your timeline, remove everything back to a previous point or back to a future cut in your timeline. So trim top and trim tail. The second tip I've got for you is around volume level adjustments. So typically if you just wanna raise or lower the volume for a certain section or a small amount of your timeline or of a clip, then you'll have to go through and mark keyframes, um, raise the volume to that point and then use keyframes again to lower it back down. And really the whole keyframe thing, while it works, it's a little fiddly. There's a quick tool in Final Cut that allows you to do this really, really quickly and it's called the range selector. So if you press R on the keyboard, you'll get the different range selector cursor that appears. You can draw out the section on your clip that you wanna make louder or quieter and that'll automatically add the keyframes in there for you. But the coolest part about this is it's not just adding a hard cut, it's actually adding in keyframes that are slightly in. So it's gonna give you a fade in and a fade out to that different volume level or a transition up and down from the different volume levels. So that's something that's really, really cool and it saves you a heap of time in your editing going and playing around and adjusting all the keyframes manually. Tip number three is all about motion titles. Now we did do a video a little while back uh, and I'll put a link up in the cards now, showing you how you can create awesome titles, animated titles, animated graphics, for your videos and customize everything directly from within Final Cut. So no need to have Apple Motion or Adobe After Effects and render everything out and then bring it in. You can do all the editing of these awesome graphics and titles directly in your timeline. So if you're not using motion titles or templates from places like Video Hive in your Final Cut editing, then you're really missing out because what you can do is so powerful and really looks really professional and it's so easy. So make sure you check out that video, but also make sure that you're using motion titles or motion templates 
in your Final Cut editing. Tip number four is all about color correction. Now this is something that I didn't realize uh, was a big time saver until I was watching someone edit in Final Cut rather recently and the process for applying the color correction filter or effect was what most people would logically do, which is go to effects, grab that color correction effect, click and drag it onto your timeline and then edit the colors from there up in the color board. So that's a lot of steps just to be able to color correct a clip in your timeline. And what I was watching is he was doing that for every single clip that he wanted to color correct. Now you're probably thinking here that you could do it once and copy and paste that effect across your entire timeline. And yes, you definitely could. But if you wanna go through each individual clip and apply a different color correction to each of them, then the easiest way to do that is to press the keyboard shortcuts Command 6. Now what Command 6 will do is open up the color board, or essentially it's dropping the color correction effect onto whichever clip you've got selected on the timeline and giving you direct access to make color adjustments on the fly. So if you're scrubbing through your timeline and you press Command 6, making color adjustments at that point will make any adjustments to the clips that you've got selected on your timeline. So you'll save a heap of time going into effects and applying that color correction effect to each individual clip Whereas now you don't need to. As long as you've got that color board open using Command 6, then you can adjust your clips on the fly. So if you're someone that already color corrects this way and you might be thinking, yep, that's not a real big tip, it is a huge time saver for anyone that is not doing it that way. And I can guarantee you that there's a lot of people out there that aren't color correcting that way or aren't using that tool and are manually applying their effects to each individual clips. And that leads us to tip number five. Now tip number five is all about export settings and presets inside of Final Cut. Now when we moved from Adobe Premiere to Final Cut for these YouTube videos, we got quite a few comments about the drop in quality of our videos. Yet we were still using the same camera, we were still using the same quality settings, we we're still shooting in 4K, editing in 4K. The difference was we were using the Premiere presets before and we we're using the Final Cut presets now for YouTube. And the Final Cut presets for YouTube are much, much lower bit rates than they are in Adobe Premiere. So my tip here is if you want to export your videos at a higher quality for YouTube, now that also means that you'll have a larger file size as well, but I would suggest that you don't use the built-in preset in Final Cut for YouTube, at least at the time of filming this video. There could be a new update that comes out tomorrow that totally changes all of that. But for now, the preset quality isn't as good as say the built-in one in Adobe Premiere. So what I do, my workflow in Final Cut is I export a master file. So it's a much bigger file, but the quality is much, much better. So my workflow from there is that I'll actually just upload that larger file to YouTube. Now I'm lucky enough to have fairly decent internet here in Australia, which is a weird thing. But if you don't have good enough internet or you still want a smaller file, then use Handbrake or use Compressor to compress the file afterwards. But to get it out of Final Cut, use the master file and don't just use the built-in YouTube preset for best results. Okay, so there's my top five tips for creating better videos and doing it faster in Final Cut Pro. Now, if you're looking to take your editing to the next level again and eliminate a huge amount of rework and wasted time in your editing process, then definitely check out our free guide that we've put together running through step-by-step -step the ultimate video editing process to prevent issues and save a huge amount of time editing. It's called the Primal Video Method and you can get access to it using the link on screen now or below in the description. I'll see you soon.